Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Will Crosby, and that hideously ugly squeal you heard earlier is the pig Ian Gibson. I, you know, you prepped me for it. You said, let's see if this works. And then it started. So I, uh, I'm just a little squeal of uh, excitement and pride. I'm you. I'm you happy. Ian, pride off. was last month, please. Oh, I'm um, sorry. What is this month? Is this I America believe it's month? actually uh, Disability Pride Month, which is why people were criticizing so many uh, companies for, like, changing their stuff already. Anyways, Jake Terrio is I, also I, here. Wait, does that, like, Disability Pride, does that mean only gay and disabled like it's a venn diagram that's, and this is your month yeah let's uh, listen i uh, i keep seeing month maga stuff. month trending uh, maga month <laughs> that's what i keep seeing i think because of the fourth oh, i think, and don't, I they think get the, don't they get the 11 people, other months <laughs> most people who celebrate uh would not care for what was celebrated last month <laughs> i think they have an entire day to themselves <laughs> basically now so. yeah january 6th um Folks, we're here to talk about video games. We're here to talk about the truth. Um, and we're here to talk about... <laughs> the truth about video games. The truth about video games. Um, I just... I'm saving... Ian, I'm saving you for last. I'm sorry. But you can't go first. <laughs> because this episode will be 10 hours. Uh, so I'm saving those That's 10 fine. hours for after. <laughs> um, I prepared. I'll have you know. Um, Jake, why don't you tell hmm. me what you've been playing? Okay, well, th this week, surprisingly, I was actually able to play a wider variety of games than I, I normally play, um, as the Destiny 2 season is slowing down. Um, so, first was uh, I downloaded Circuit Superstars, which is a little top-down arcade racing game. Um, mm -hmm. And I learned that Ian doesn't like <laughs> top-down arcade racing games. It's true. Which I understand. Um but um, it's pretty fun, and it's it's a lot of different um, types of cars, which I feel like they've tried to get the physics of each car Correct. sort of right from the top-down perspective. Like, you can't just... There's not just one method of driving that's going to suit you for every vehicle. You have to kind of adapt how you turn and how you whatever. Um, so that's fun. It's... Uh, I it's like four it's sort of like mario kart where it's all the different kinds of um it's like amateur it's got levels of you know the ai difficulty and i was doing like way better than i thought i would be on the lowest one and so i jumped to the highest one just to see how it was and i got dominated so i went back to the lowest one <laughs> nice. it's fun it's not there's not really anything substantial beyond that i think it could be a fun couch co-op game if we wanted to do that, but excuse me. I, I mean, absolutely not. And never. Sure. Um, so then I, eh? no, no, you're good. You're good. You go next game. Go. Oh, okay. So I played, uh, I downloaded Carrion, which is a devolver digital game from, from, I think last year, or it might've been 2020. I, I can't say for certain. I think it was last year. It's, uh, the kind of like the thing meets the blob. Um, and you go, you're like going through a science laboratory and you're eating people and you're trying to, you know, break out. Um, it was charming. It was fun. But I feel like I definitely I got to a certain point and I was like, OK, I get it. And there wasn't really like a ton of narrative heft or anything, which I wasn't mm. necessarily expecting. But um, after kind of two hours of it, I feel it had kind of played out its bit. Um and so I have not gone back to it, but it was fun for yeah. what I did play of it. Um, it's kind of kind of how I felt about uh, Blasphemous. Just after a point, I was like, "Okay, I get it. It's that's that's what this game is, and I can set it down now." Yeah, um, totally. Similarly, although I guess a, a little bit different, as I'll, I'll talk about it, was um, Below from Cappy Games. Which I want to say was 2019 or 2020 of the kind of isometric, not isometric, but it's not entirely top down. Um, you're you show up on an island in a boat, and then it's kind of Zelda ish, and then you are exploring what I thought was, I thought it was going to be 
roguelike in that all the the little dungeon dungeony crawly type spaces were procedurally generated but i'm fairly certain they're handcrafted now that i've gone through them a couple of times um because when you die um i thought oh okay i'll just you know i'm running this again but then i discovered evidence of places i had been before like doors that were locked were open bridges that were raised were were down because i had put them down earlier and then i like found my previous character's body and i was able to loot it and i wasn't expecting that um it is it's weird because i don't i wouldn't necessarily say it's fun but it's got a hypnotic kind of mesmerizing quality to it where I feel like I can't put it down because around every corner and down and further I get down each level, there's just these little bits of like, um, I don't know. It's that, it's uh, that kind of that thing you see people talk about, about environmental storytelling Mm -hmm. where there's not like a narrative to speak of, but as you're exploring the world, you're kind of piecing together a story Mm -hmm of what happened here. And so it's got a lot of that where I find myself compelled to keep going with it, even though I'm not like super enjoying it because I'm just kind of just in that world. And I'm kind of, I just want to explore it more. Um, It has two game modes, the survive, which I think is the original mode it launched with. And then an explore mode, which I might switch to just to, you know, see what's going on there. Yeah. Um, So that's been, kind of fun but more just interesting yeah i remember Um, when when below came out because it was so long between when they revealed it and it was like one of those early running jokes of when they're gonna show it off and then xbox put it out and then it was on game pass and i played like an hour of it and it got really bad reviews or not really bad but like not great reviews because it was hyped up for so long and uh Mm -hmm. i should go back to it now that it's like properly been long enough since since it came out and all that stuff and just kind of like hit it without thinking because i can't even think of their complaints anymore from the reviews so it'll be interesting yeah to sort of see if i notice any of that stuff or i kind of played it up yeah i think there's certainly um gameplay wise there's not a lot to it there's a little bit of combat and a little bit of crafting i just recently discovered a spear i didn't really know that there were other like weapon and archetypes Besides your shield and then your bow, I was like, mm. okay, I have a melee and a ranged. I wasn't expecting to find other weapons because um, there's not. There's also there's like no text prompts and there's no tutorial. You're just kind of plopped into it. So even like there's a crafting system, but even that you sort of have to kind of like, okay, well, what can I? This stick, can I use it with this? And you're just sort of like experimenting, putting things together. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's interesting, and I'm definitely going to play more of it. My Sweet. full review is forthcoming. Better. Um, and then to keep the rest of this brief, the last story mission of the current Destiny season dropped on Tuesday to wrap up the season story. Um, and I thought it was really good. Um, it is still kind of, if you're not hip to the very repetitive gameplay that comes with playing the same kind of mission each week, you're not going to like it. But um, narratively, they're firing on all cylinders right now. Now they just need to figure out how to spice up the gameplay, the delivery mechanisms of the mm. narrative. Um, and I'm about to crack 600 hours on Islanders. So Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of Built hours. a lot of islands. <laughs> I, I have Islanders downloaded, and I keep looking at it, and I say, I'll play you, and then I don't. I could probably um, figure it out because I, I did some gameplay recording for I'm, I'm eventually going to do some sort of Islanders video, but I did some gameplay recording and I found that I was doing between 20. I was spending between 20 and 30 minutes on each island. So I could okay. extrapolate that out to see how many islands I've actually done. But, mm-hmm. but that's that's my week. I'm uh, that sounds like a full and f- Fold, filled week. Uh, I was trying to think full and uh, I can't think of the freaking phrase. Uh, sounds great. Girthy, girthy week. That's what it was. Mm, girthy. That's definitely the word I thought you were going to say. Girthy week. Um, so I've been playing some video games. I've been kind of on a video game 
uh, find out a thon, uh, trying to t- try different things and what I want. Have to you play. Uh, have you figured out what video games are? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm still what pray are video, these games. video games. It's kind of my. <laughs> <laughs> it's my <laughs> prerogative. Me and uh, what's her face? What's her name? I can't. Julia Roberts. Aaron, um, Aaron anyways, Bach. mouth. Um, so I streamed one game on Tuesday uh, called Last Call BBS, which is Zachtronics' final game, or at least they're billing it as their final game. Um, it's cool. No, it it's, is. It is their. It is their final. <laughs> right. Like they're but, shutting I mean, the studio down. But you can make another game in ten years. You never know. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just saying it's built. Uh, might not be true. Viewer of this podcast in the year 2079. Um, so it's one of those We're games where long dead by then <laughs> you open the game and it gives you a whole computer interface to play around with. It's like you're actually on an older computer. Um, you there's these little like note log entries from I think he's the bartender from this bar or I. I can't remember if I no, conf- no, no spoilers. Pamper. I haven't gotten that far yet. No, okay. I don't know it's if I'm confusing one where that. You're sliding the beers across the right. I can't tell if I'm confusing that with the fake in-game BBS storytelling or the actual guy who gave you the computer. But anyways, he, he leaves these log notes for you. He's like, "Hey, I know you wanted to check out my old crap. Here's this. I'll leave logs for everything." So basically, the only um, game on the computer is Solitaire. So I like loaded up the Solitaire. I was playing Solitaire and. Uh, this is where the stream started being a train wreck because a lot of Zachtronics things are like brain games. Uh, yeah, so tough. it's like, they why am I streaming this? I cannot focus on talking to literally no one watching except Halucha and trying to Me expertly play end. this game. What? I hopped in at the end. I saw oh, you yes, make the yes, flesh. Yes, you did. Sorry. Flesh. You were there at the end. Um, but you weren't there at the beginning when I was playing Solitaire. No, um, I was. I got there for what, some of the digital gunpla and then the fl- flash. Look, this game is pretty good. I've played it about an hour, hour and a half. I, I can't stop playing that solitaire. I just want at least it's one pretty... win in that solitaire. <laughs> it's so I'm so used to spider solitaire because I'm a bitch. And I just yeah, love when the exactly. cards go together. Um. So I uh. So I, then I go to the BBS and the cool thing this does is like you're literally like dialing to the numbers and you go to download the game, and it said like one minute download. And I, in my, you can watch the stream. I'm like, oh, that's funny. It like says how long it's going to take. It takes that long. It takes yeah. a minute and a half to download the first game. It's great because then you just you minimize the browser, and then you open Solitaire and you play Solitaire. <laughs> so the game downloads. That's amazing. <laughs> and I'm like, so I open up the game. Now the website says in 15 minutes you can download another game. So I played the Dungeons and Diagrams, yeah. which I thought would be a nonograms knockoff, and it wasn't quite. Kind of. um, so basically, it has its own set of l- rules, which further added to the the lameness of the stream because now I'm trying to, in my brain, stream, forget nonogram rules while looking at what clearly is a nonogram, and then uh, add the new rules that I just learned in my head. So I, I managed one of them. Yeah. Um, same same I, I did one and i struggled on the second one for like 10 minutes and then i was like I, i'm out i'm going back did, to solitaire <laughs> yeah i did one of them and then i said i want this on my phone like zachtronic should just I make a mobile know, version was, of that game it was just hurting my brain too yeah. much <laughs> but i think it was a good hurt uh as they say john hurt <laughs> love to say i will say when when you got to the building the flesh bugs or whatever you were making like you were figuring out the gameplay way faster than I was. I was like, I was even watching you do stuff and I'd be like, I don't understand how he's making these decisions. The, so uh, I think, yeah, next I downloaded the Gundam game because I just wanted to see it, which was genuinely really cool. I could not for the cool. life. Could you change pages? Yeah. How? Well, no, I don't know. Okay. I don't think you could change pages. Okay. I was but going. I don't think. I don't think you need to. No, no. I just got the four tabs. Yeah, so. I, I built the full, so, so, wait, full model. Let's, let's preface this. It, it is it is kind of a Gunpla simulator, but it's basically a Gunpla simulator that has a puzzle underneath it because they're not giving you full instructions. Yeah. And at the same time, they're showing you like the final paint scheme. So if you decide to paint it, you have to figure out, oh, I have to mask off this area or, oh, these are two separate parts. I need to figure out the order to do it 
in the correct order to cut to paint it and then bring it together because even when you paint it it's an airbrush so it's yeah. like literally just painting everything you have the circle over so you have to be careful about it so it's it's really cool concept where they basically took gunpla and it's like 75 percent gunpla simulator 25 percent like light puzzle game and, and it's pretty cool totally that the masking tape surprised me too because you can hold shift and like lower both sides of it so you can like uh-huh. nail it and even with some of that painting um i want to go back in there because at first i was like oh only three models but it's pretty in-depth uh as okay, far as decals anyway. and everything yeah uh and then i downloaded the flesh game that the forbidden something it was some weird forbidden uh, path Forbidden Path, yeah. I forget like, the first word. That. Yeah, I was like <laughs> Eldritch, um, which basically is like um, I believe it's similar to Zachtronics. Um, it's like Apothecary game. What's that? It's one of them. Magnum Opus. Magnum Opus. Thank you. Um, in which you were like inputting a sequence of things you want to run, and then it is running mm. them live as you're changing it. So you're trying to go from this seed of blood to like this filled out thing of flesh and the blood turns into uh, for one of them, like the blood turned into flesh. Then one of them was blood turned into uh, something that wasn't bone. And then that Seem- turned into bone. Mm-hmm. Um, no, it's not semen. Uh, it was like gristle or something. Um, so it's like one of those cool puzzle things. Shut up, Ian. Uh that was really fun and I can't wait to get back into the game <laughs> because uh, I just like those like sort of it's like hypnospace outlaw. It's like you're in a system yeah. so they can theoretically do stuff to your desktop, even though it's not your real desktop. Pony um, Island. I know I got to play Pony Island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inscription. I, I do. I really like um, with last call BBS. Like this feels like the final Zachtronics game, but I feel like they did it in a good way. I, I don't know if this is what actually happened, but it feels like every single game they included in this BBS is an idea that they thought about fleshing out into a full game. And rather than having like the flesh game be its own thing, they were like, look, we're going to wrap things up. Let's get all these ideas that are good and we'll like flesh them out just enough to be interesting and have, you know, maybe five, 10, 20 puzzles each and then put them in this. And that way you can kind of sample. Cause the thing about Zectronics games are they can be pretty tough. They, they can be, they can be very tough and they they always have like some sort of mechanic that they hinge around on. So if you're not into the challenge and you're not into that mechanic, you're not really going to like the game. Not because it's bad, but it's just not for you. But being able to spread out multiple mechanics and multiple difficulty levels in a single Zachtronics game, mm-hmm. that feels like that feels like the sweet bots. That that is a Zachtronics buffet because you can see everything they do well without being forced to partake in every single one of it. You can pick which ones you, you like to play the most. Yeah. Um, sorry, I, I turned around quick because I have the Zachtronics book, uh, which are like all his oh, sketches cool. and game design and everything. And I wonder uh, if any of those are in here in some form of like, hey, I'm saving this for a rainy day. Um, I I've read it. read like a bit of this book. It's really cool, but also like overwhelming. You're like, guy. what's it called? A Zach like? I've never yeah, heard Zach like. Um. But other than Last Call BBS, I am also playing, drumroll please, The Outer Worlds. Um, I booted up on the Xbox and I thought to myself, should I start this game over and then quit halfway because I start remembering everything or should I just dive back into my last save? So I just dove back into my last save. About 15 minutes in, I wanted to stop playing, but I pushed on through and now I'm like four to eight hours later still playing the game um it's really fun it feels like i'm playing another fallout uh game in a sense like it's not like when i'm going back to replay like oblivion or skyrim or even fallout like because i don't know what's gonna happen um and i forgot how deep that game is with the choices you make and the characters are with you and like yeah some of the avenues like i'll talk to someone and i'll think i've exhausted all the like talking options and then one thing will pop up and then it'll lead to a quest i'm like hey if i had stopped talking to this person i wouldn't have gotten this side quest or this task or something like that um so i'm really enjoying it i bought both dlcs to play as well um which i thought i wasn't sure how it would include them and it does actually a nice thing where it's like hey if 
it like puts it next to your main quest and they're completely separate from the game. So like when you choose mm-hmm. to start one, it puts you into it. Um, and nice. it tells you the recommended levels for them. So I'm just going to wait until I probably hit one or two levels above that and then dive right in. Um, but yeah, across the board, it, it's nice to come back to it. Um, I'm not like, I don't think anything would have changed back when I first played it of like how much I liked it, but I think I just hit my threshold uh, and then Karen was playing it. And then now it's enough time to go back and get into it. Um, the one thing I was going to say that irks me about it, and I won- I don't think they could change for the second game, but Fallout, Skyrim, Oblivion feel like open worlds because you're in one world and you're walking around it. You enter into Megaton or you enter into Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, but the whole map is your world and you can explore it. Versus in Outer Worlds, you're going to different planets. You're not traveling. You're not doing the walking distance between the Megatons and the Bost- Bostons and whatever. You're only going to those cities. So it just feels like I'm never traveling. I'm always somewhere, yeah. if that makes sense. But I think that's I think that's kind of a space game problem. Like I guarantee you, Starfield yeah, is yeah, going to feel totally. the exact same way. That was yeah. literally the next sentence out of my brain. Is so I was thinking about <laughs> this late. last night, uh, and then you fucked it up. But mm-hmm. like that's what I'm afraid with for Starfield because they're gonna. I'm yeah, just at that point. I'm fast traveling to cities, which is not a thing I do. And you and you can't land on planets. You just right. select a planet and you're on. I the mean planet. that part's fine with me, uh, but. It's just like that travel part. I know they're kind of mitigating it with the space flight and the fighting and all that sort of stuff. But I'll I'll be interested to see how much that mitigates my missing of that in the outer (laughs) worlds. Um, It's just something I thought of. Yeah, I was just going to say, I feel like outer worlds could solve it with a combination of space travel. You land on the planet yourself and also the little prince planets. Yeah. Where it's it's you know, you just literally shrink the planet down and you're you're landing the ship on it and then that's the that's the world open up in a way. Yeah. Um they could do that. That would work. Cause I think Starfield's still gonna have the issue of oh, I'm flying around a little bit, but you're still gonna have that disconnect, especially and, with a thousand empty planets, you know. Yeah. And and I think another hope with that is that a lot of the places in the outer worlds, because I feel if outer worlds feels more like a tester to see how obsidian could make a fallout like outside of mm-hmm. their own uh, uh or with their own ip and so i think they went small on a lot of those locations um yeah and told it that way pretty well so i think you could i wonder if bigger locations would also help out with that where where like you're saying do not even just the small planet but just a big enough area of a planet uh with multiple yeah. cities if that'll sort of help out so um, but I think I think look I'm going to say something controversial and I think you're going to have, you're going to feel obligated Ian, something controversial you're going to feel obligated to agree with me which is that going back to outer worlds and playing it and thinking about it and even just watching some of those trailers etc that game shows and plays a lot better than Starfield showed at E3 Starfield feels like it's a normal ass Bethesda game and there's no charm or pizzazz on top of it except for the unique spaceship building. That's kind of the only thing they've got going for them. And then you got Outer Worlds, which which do, isn't doing anything crazy new, but it's just doing it all so well and it looks so good and it feels so good and it's colorful and exciting. You got Mr. Yeah. Moonface, etc. And then Starfield shows and it's like you took a 25 year old game formula and you shoved it in outer space. Who gives a shit? I yeah, mean, but and then uh, you've got you Outer admit, Wilds, which is a which game. is the yeah. pinnacle. Yeah. Um, outer yes. Worlds, like I still have a ton of issues with Outer Worlds. Um, I think the whole health thing system is stupid. I think their UI in their menus is awful. Every time you look yeah. at an item, it covers up every other item, and I yeah. it drives me bananas. I hate it so much. I don't. But the nice yeah, thing is, yeah, I don't yeah, engage yes. with any of those sy- systems. <laughs> Fuck off. I don't engage with any of those systems, and it doesn't bother me at all. Um, like yeah, one way or the other. The other thing is, it's still Xbox One. Uh, it is not Xbox Series X enhanced. It does not use quick resume. You have to save and exit and reload the entire game every single time. It is very frustrating, and also the game does not look good on my Xbox. Um, 
It yeah, is. But, I, but, I, but I think my point is that it felt like Outer Worlds was somebody else taking the Fallout formula and doing it better. And then Starfield is them saying, we're not going to make the Fallout formula better. We're just going to put it in space. Yeah, but I feel like that's what they did with Outer Worlds. They said, hey, we don't have Fallout anymore, so let's just put it in space. Like, I don't... I don't. Well, they did it better. The combat feels better than any Fallout game. No, I, I mean, I, I prefer Fallout way more than I prefer this game. I, I miss Vats. I hate the slowdown thing. Um, yeah, I, I think I just I like... Just, I just... New. I just can't help but go back to the point of Starfield. It did not show well. It just did not show well. It didn't yeah, show terribly, it, but it, it looks didn't show very well. familiar. Yeah, totally. But it, yeah. in a in a bad way. It's yeah. not like last year familiar. It's like ten years ago familiar. Yeah. But I mean, again, I, I feel like that's also you for sure. Like I think that looks great. I'm excited. I hear for you. It. And I normally I would agree with you and I don't care what anybody else thinks, but listening to like <laughs> listening to like Bombcast, Gersman, Next Landers, and all the other reactions, I feel like the majority opinion is that it didn't show that well. Yeah, I, I mean I, I like I don't know. I, I don't know what people wanted to see. I, I saw what I liked, so it's like okay. That's fair. I'm That's just fair. someone waiting for Fallout three two three point five. Um, but it'll never happen. Um and don't say it's New Vegas. You know, yeah, that's 77. a good point, though. I don't know what I want, though. So I'm just I'm just bitching without knowing what would make me happy. That's a fair point. Yeah, that's a great song. You should write, you should write Factorio. That. I'm going to get Factorio, <laughs> Factorio two. That's what I want. Yeah, it's Factorio two. Um, so that's all I've been playing. Uh, Ian Gibson. I heard Hi. through my wrist uh, receiver uh, that also looks like handcuffs that you finished. A game by Hideo Kojima that yeah. isn't part of the Metal Gear franchise. Um, Police not. Well, so yeah, no. I don't mean to interrupt you here, but I realize this is actually the first Kojima game that I have I have finished. I played a little more than half of Metal Gear Solid, and I played a little. I played about half of Metal Gear Solid Five. The Phantom Pain. You should play yes, three. Right. The I Phantom think you would like Pain. Three. I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about going through them because honestly, I I really enjoyed Death Stranding. And even with everybody poo-pooing the game in total and then poo-pooing the ending, and even with Chris poo-pooing the game. No the ending, spoilers. I'm still going make, to play it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, the ending is is not that bad. I think I'm okay with the story decisions and twists. Like, it's not awful. It's not amazing, but I'm like, yeah, you telegraphed a lot of that. It fits in with the themes of the story. My main problem is with how it is presented, the ending, because uh, so so I knew the ending was going to be long. Like when I looked up like Death Stranding tips, one of them was like, hey, when you get to the end of this game, give yourself four hours. And it turns out as more like six. <laughs> like when you get to the part that you think is the end, you still have like six hours of like this weird boss rush and then like endless cutscenes. And and I'm fine with endless cutscenes. The problem is just some of them are just like, like, like there's literally a part again. Don't worry, I'm not going to spoil it. There's literally a part where like you have already figured out pretty much everything, and they just sit you down and have what somebody explain dump. all of that. Yeah, they, but they explain all of it again to you for like 30 minutes. And it's just like, okay, that's too much. Like, it's like, give me a 30 minute Kojima's cutscene. I'm okay with that. But literally, just like having you do nothing but sit. We're going to tell a story and then we're going to give you three minutes to run around and then sit and we give you another 10 minutes of story. It was just too much. And then, and then the other part that was really felt offensive to me was. Um, so throughout the game, you are seeing flashbacks from BB's life, like through his eyes. So it's like Mads Mikkelsen, like staring at him and stuff. And it's like, and everybody's like talking to BB and you like, you have like the glass pane in front of you. And it's like, it's pretty cool. Me. <laughs> it's pretty cool. But then at the end, they're like, Hey, in case you haven't gotten it yet, we're going to replay all all of those <laughs> scenes, which is like 15, 20 minutes total worth of scenes, but f with the camera 
in the room. So you're seeing it third person now. And it's like literally every single one of those cutscenes just replayed from a different perspective. And you're you're barely getting anything new from it because it's the literally the exact same delivery, exact same dialogue lines. You've already at this point figured out which voice is which person and who's who behind the masks. And they just replay the whole thing. So it's one of those things where like I'm fine with the ending. I'm fine with the story points you're hitting. It's just – that's the part where it started to fall apart with me was like these poor execution choices that just made it like, okay, I get it. Okay. I get it. Okay. Okay. I understand. Don't tell it to me for the fifth time now in the most boring way possible. Uh, but other than that, I think I enjoyed the game. I, I mean, Jake, I'm glad you're going to play it because this I am. Is a I've Jake, been... it's a Jake ass game. This is a Jake ass <laughs> game. I appreciate that. It's, it's one of those that just given everything I've heard about it, I've really wanted to, have a chunk of time set aside so I don't have to play it in little increments. I can play it in kind of larger chunks. But honestly, honestly, so the game, my total play time was like 26 hours, like 26 oh, okay. hours. I think it was like 12 minutes. It really wasn't that Less long. Less than I the, spent finishing Horizon 2. Yeah. The last five to six hours of that is the, oh, fuck, boys. What is happening? Fuck. I just saw an email. I just... I just won my shop goodwill option for armored core for <gasps> answer Sony PlayStation oh, 3. Nice. I need you to understand real quick. Okay. <laughs> Chris prepped this to me last week and I was like, you know what? It's time. I need to do it. It's not Xbox backwards compatible. It's only on PS3 and Xbox 360. So mm-hmm. I decided instead of getting a 360, because I don't really need a 360 because a lot of it's backwards compatible. I bought a PS3 and then I was Blu-ray. trying to. F- yeah, yes, yes. And then and then I was trying to find a copy of Armored Core and they're all like $60 plus on eBay and Oof. even more at other places. But I found one on Shop Goodwill and I've been in a bidding fight with somebody and I just got it for I think like $45 including nice. shipping. Dang. Oh, you're telling me I didn't get it? Uh, <laughs> no. I was just it's driving like the price up for you. <laughs> $43. So I, I'm sorry. I just saw that email pop and I was like, whoo. That would have been Anyways, a great um, um, subversion if I see how, if I did a video, see how much I can Ian to pay for Armored Core 4 <laughs> on Shop Goodwill. <laughs> Armored Core 4 answer. For answer, answer. But F O R answer. Um, yes. But yeah, so Jake, I just just to wrap up the point I was making, the game's not that long. It's also perfect to play it in little chunks because some of the deliveries, honestly, most of the deliveries take like, 10 to 20 minutes cool. and, and there's a there's real nice points the save system is great like you can't save if you're actively in combat sure. which is pretty pretty rare so you can pretty much save whatever and then the other thing is um it's pretty good on the ps4 it's just as good on the ps5 the if you can't save you just open the menu and then you just put the console in rest mode um and even if you do lose a save it's not going to drop you back that far like when you die it just drops you back a little bit so even though it it, it is uh, i don't want to say a long game even though it starts to feel long in the tooth at the end it's definitely a game that you can pick up and play whenever you want to like i was doing so don't don't feel like you have to sit down and play it in giant chunks like it's fucking returnal or something like that (laughs) (laughs) as when you were talking about having a big exposition dump at the end suddenly i was just picturing like the cutscene. It's like cuts the freeze frame and then Hideo Kojima walks out with a laser pointer <laughs> and starts pointing at things and that explaining be, them. That See, would be more fragile, exciting than what they did. But not that fragile. <laughs> but not that fragile. I, I will say, um, I think the ending, I think I did it in like five or six sittings because it just it just kept going. And again, I was fine with that because there's a lot to wrap up. It was just like the last hour where you're really like, OK, now you're just fucking with me because I already mm-hmm. understand this. I don't need you to <laughs> sit me like literally sit me down and explain it to me. OK, anyways, it's fantastic. You should play it. It's on the PlayStation Plus. I'm going to. Yeah. Now yeah. I think all three yeah. of you have played it and I haven't. So I need yeah, to so catch up. To. So it can be our game, game of the year. year. Um, <laughs> I yeah, Ian, you should play the other Kojima games. Uh, I was just gonna Naturally. say, I'm thinking about it. Metal Gear Solid Three was the first Kojima game that I like started and like got right away. Like that one and two, Patriots. no, that's four. Uh, oh. three is Snake Eater, which is a fantastic game. Um, but one and two, like I was following guides because they're PS one, early PS two, like kind of like shaped in that way where like games are just difficult and you got to figure out the things to do and everything. But three was the first time I like, I don't think I checked a single guide playing through it 
Um, it's just like presents you with everything, gives you all the tools, and you kind of run with it. Um, mm-hmm. And there's in the that's like where all of like Kojima's like crazy good stuff comes out. I think because there's multiple ways to do things and all that sort of stuff. Plus, it has a ladder scene with Snake Eater. It's really good. I do know about the ladder scene. I also I, Snake I, Eater, I, I definitely want to. Because I think there's H is is the best way to play those HD collection on the 360 backwards compat. I I, I played on PS3. Uh, I have the well. If you want my Metal Gear Solid collection, that has every single game except for five. Yeah, yeah. Bring that. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring a Gran Turismo Seven. By the way. No, but I don't want. It's to. game of the year. It's game <laughs> of the year, buddy. If you're gonna no, make my me Metal play Gear Solid the quarry. Hey, the cor- the quarry. Let's do it. Because I'm getting right. the PS3, baby. It I know. I'm very excited. The game of the year. What'd you that call reminds me? Game? I nothing. <laughs> there is there is a chance. I'm just gonna say this. There is a chance that I may have to buy another PS3 because another? because the PS3 may get delivered while I'm out of town this weekend, and depending on which day it gets delivered. My entire family may also be out of town and it's Florida in the summer. So it may just sit outside and accidentally get rained on. I don't oh, know. No. I've got to see if, Definitely yeah. get rained on. So, so I got to see if I can intercept it or do do one of those things. But there's a chance that I end up with a ruined PS3. But honestly, that's OK, because then I could do something weird with this. I, gonna say I only stolen. Paid, no, no, no. I only paid like 82 bucks for it anyway. So 82. That's not bad. Yeah, that's I bought. Um, bad. Yeah, I bought the my PS3 back i don't even remember but it's back when they were still making them uh because i got one of the late model with like the sliding top that sucks uh so bad Uh Uh, folks that is everything we have been playing which means it's time to talk about everything we've been newsing which means i gotta play the news theme this is the extended Here's the news, we're talking about news, it's gaming news, what's up news? Can't stand the longer version, so we're back to the short one. <laughs> um, folks, we're going to talk about the news. Wait a minute, fuck you, buddy. <laughs> you got to go back to the long one. It's too long, we, I hate it. We talked about this. Al um, we, No, we talked about level 100 level 100 episode yeah 100, we, we do it we do a big everything. we do a big yeah but that means you gotta you gotta no you gotta play it because no. i can't believe you're fucking zach over like this How i'm not dare you? <laughs> he wrote it burns you factorio fucking and you fucking you. Him. stop fucking him <laughs> <laughs> he gave me permission to stop playing it i say with no proof um folks <laughs> there's some news this week um it's not organized in any sort of way but we can talk about it. Um, I learned this week that Lollipop Chainsaw today <laughs> uh, is the brainchild of Suda51 and James Gunn, which is a thing you didn't know I that? never knew. Um, yeah, I didn't know the James Gunn part. I, I only didn't know that because when Lollipop Chainsaw was last around, I wasn't like that deep into like video game news and everything like that or like broadly um a nerd as you say um but they announced a remake for 2023 with neither of those gentlemen being involved uh, mm, which they're is both busy good it's they're a busy. remake i mean what are they gonna uh, you can fuck up a remake but at the same time do you really need the original creators involved in a remake yeah but suda 51 uh to me, seems like the kind of guy who would want to do cool stuff in a remake and like change things up and yeah, everything. Um, that's a fair point. So, like in that sort of sense, I feel bad. Like someone's harvesting your child and putting new body parts on them, but mm. they could be a cyborg child, so that's a benefit. <laughs> um, the the only other thing I know about Lollipop Chainsaw is I think someone cosplaying as them was banned at PAX the year I was there. Um, it was the year after was they he- banned Booth Babes. Was it mm. you? Yeah, it was oh, me. Oh, no, no, sorry. I get confused. You're the reason they banned Booth, babes. Yes, I got the I'm the reason. Stuff. That's right. Uh, they call me the Grope King. <laughs> no, they don't. That's disgusting. Um, they, got, <laughs> they, call me, they call me 
Halucha, please, please get that. <laughs> oh, damn it. I can't talk anymore. We have our one fan. <laughs> damn it. Um, Yeah, that's, I mean, that's all I, I, I don't even, you put this on here probably because you're horny for chainsaws. <laughs> Yeah, I just I've never played this game. I've heard crazy things about it. It I I like the idea of let's go back to those weird games that didn't quite get the audience they deserved and let's celebrate them with the remake, assuming the remake is proper and it's not uh, you know, a garbage fire. So I'm I'm excited for this. Like I've I've thought about playing that game, but I was always like, eh, yeah, I'm not sure, but remake, bring it around, baby. Perfect time. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, next up here, it has come out that Rockstar paused Red Dead Redemption and GTA 4 remasters in favor of working on GTA 6. Um, uh, Jake says unsurprising. Jake, why is that? Well, just, just after the, the poor critical reception of the, um, GTA 3 remaster, uh, was it, it was, uh, Three San Andreas and Vice City, yeah. right? It was a bunch of them, but people did not like them, and they seemed fairly broken. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I totally understand if if Rockstar would just be like, "Uh, yeah, let's just keep working on the new one and not devote time to remaking these." Yeah, I, I think you're gonna hit the nail on the head. This um comes from a uh. uh I'm actually trying to read what they are. Caught at attention. Oh, reliable and trusted GTA insider Tez uh, said as per a reliable source with clear accuracy on Rockstar plans. Remaster of GTA 4 and Red Dead Redemption 1 were on the table a few years ago, but Rockstar chose not to proceed with the project in mind. The poor reception of the trilogy might be a reason behind the decision. So it's not directly attributed to it. Uh, it also mentioned, like I said, they had this idea a couple years ago, but I don't think that sort of reception of a remaster. It certainly didn't help. It being their fault. Yeah. Um, like, it would be yeah. one thing if they made a great remaster and it didn't sell. Um, no, they just pawned it off and trashed it, yeah. basically. Uh, um, but I do like think, that. I do think, I, I, I'm excited about this news because Grand Theft Auto 6, look, I'm excited for Grand Theft Auto 6. I think Red Dead Redemption 2 was a letdown. In some ways, GTA 6 for me has always been a slightly better series. And the problem was it felt like they weren't working on it because they were spending too much time making GTA Online load even slower and slower and slower. <laughs> um, so giving everybody them, even more wacky weapons to kill you the minute you load in. Yeah. And even more ways to spend your hard purchased shark cards. Mm -hmm. uh, this feels like them. I'm reading the tea leaves on this a little bit, but this feels like them going. It is time to put away childish things and bad decisions, no matter how much money it makes us. And we need to work and focus and bring out GTA six. So for me, it felt like Rockstar kind of skipped their stride a little bit between Red Dead two and the emphasis on GTA line and the remasters. So to see them, you know, kind of step back and say, no, 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 no. Put everything away. Everybody GTA six. Let's make another fantastic, incredible triple A game that that makes me hopeful. Totally. Yeah. Um, although I would, I mean, the fans, I, I was going to say, I would love a remaster of either of those games, but I feel like the fans are already pretty much doing that anyways with all the mods. So. And, and I think part of it is Red Dead doesn't need a, a remaster. I mean, I played it in 2016 because it's backwards compat from the 360 to the one. And I'm assuming to the series as well. Yeah. And it plays fine. It's still great. So yeah, there's, fantastic. there's not really a need for a remaster of that GTA four, maybe especially it's, it's got that like wonky engine stuff where it, it's always been wonky on newer consoles and on PC. So, but uh, I, I'm glad they're focusing on what matters most, which is GTA six. GTA six should be the new RoboCop game. Yeah. Oh. That'd be pretty good. There is a you can. There's a RoboCop mod for GTA. Um, I'm more five. in in the tone of the narrative. Oh, I see what you're saying. I just want yeah. to kind of Verhovian satire. Yeah. Um. I forget what I was gonna say. Oh, I almost downloaded GTA 4 the other day. I was like, I used to play multiplayer in that a lot. Uh, and uh, we should do a stream of that. There's some game modes in that that are genuinely really good. Um, I, I just had fun just messing around in the city. It was just a lot. Yeah. Fun. I mean, that fun. part's the best part. That's what I would do with my brothers. But, like, some of those game modes are just, like, protect the person. 
yeah. are just like so well or done that King Kong. Yeah, like even playing those in um, GTA Five just isn't the same experience. Um, the yeah. swimmy cars too, love it. Um, oh, yeah. This next article, I'm assuming Ian put this here. Uh, Diablo Immortals making a million dollars a day. This is the phone one. Yes, this is the phone one that is riddled with Michael transactions and just is like like it's not that it's OK. It is that it's that it's riddled with all this like pay to win stuff, but it's also apparently the drop rate even when you pay for loot boxes is so low. Like there's all these stories of people being like, I paid five thousand dollars and I didn't get a single legendary gem out of it, which yes. is basically what you pay money to get. So it's just trash. And um I don't know. This story is depressing. You know, this is, but you all have to, phones, right? Yeah. Fuck off. This is, uh, this is, this is according to, uh, um, a, a company that basically tracks like mobile sales in game and out of game, et cetera. And they're estimating they're earning about a million dollars a day. And that is yeah, very depressing. Uh, y'all need to stop paying money for this game. They especially need to because be, how much of that is going to Bobby? Oh God. Yeah. It's just, they, they, it, fucking mobile games man like look i understand some people like mobile games mobile game trash mobile games you you're fine just go over there don't touch my ips don't touch my developers don't don't get to the point where you're fucking up real video games because your mobile version is making a million dollars a day that's that's where i get upset so this is this is a depressing story really yeah someone call up michael let him know that we no longer want to do any transactions with him uh, and we're just, there will be no more transactions. Yeah, we're done, Michael. So get the message. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, the game's not even. It's really not that fun. Just play Diablo three. Uh, Diablo three is a better game. Uh, next up here, God of War. Sorry, Ian Gibson's game of the year, twenty twenty two, God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm cackling at the fact that Ian has to play this game. Uh, launches oh, November 9th. It, it could be bad. It could be bad. That's true. It could be bad. It could be bad. Um, they came out, they announced it in probably the grandest way possible. Uh, <laughs> instead of, you know, there were rumors of a big old stream, a uh, celebration, oh. but you know what? That's E3 just press too much for me. Why don't we just tweet it out there for the masses? No, why don't we just, why don't we just tweet a link to a blog post? Yes. At 9.02 a.m. <laughs> Uh, and have Will Jesus. scramble out of the shower because he got a notification about yet. it. Um, yeah. Wait, was it nine? Was it actually nine o two a.m. Eastern? It was yeah. like yeah, I six a.m. My phone on the rang. Pacific Coast I, or not rang, but pinged while I was in the sh- taking a shower, and I was like, I just looked at my phone and go, oh shit, and I just <laughs> finish off if you know what I mean, uh, and towel off, and then made a. Yeah, I just look, I know people are excited for this game. And regardless of what you think about this game, Sony's like Sony's whole PR strategy right now is just bad. Like this, this is your fucking tentpole release for this year, right? Like you should be screaming about this. You should have had an E3 press conference. I know you don't do E3, so just have a state of play like you did have a state of play, but it was kind of ho-hum because it wasn't E3 <laughs> quality. You, this is this is your tent pole, baby. This is your fall tent pole. Why are you just poo-pooing this out in a blog post tweet? Yeah, because Horizon definitely got more press in the yeah. lead up to launch. I like part of me Maybe wonders if they're like. Punishing people for their rightly so bad behavior towards people to announce the release date or when it's coming out and sort of stuff. Like, I wonder if there was oh, someone gosh. back there being like, I don't oh, think shit. Sony as but, a corporate uh, entity would care about that. I'm sure yeah. the folks at Sony Santa Monica care. Yeah. But Plus, this is, this is a strategy they've been doing. They keep leaning on blog posts. Like, like the, I think it was yesterday they did the thing for at least the second time. They may have done it before where they say, Hey, we're going to talk about a lot of like PlayStation uh, indie games and we're going to do it in a new blog post every 15 minutes so pay attention mm-hmm. for the next six hours and just watch this slow trickle of indie blog posts and it's like no they keep trying to focus on the playstation blog i don't know maybe there's some executive behind the scenes that's tweaking the levers and is like yeah we gotta we gotta measure this in, in blog impressions so let's <laughs> I love we gotta blogs. get them on the blog how do we get them on the blog and it's just like, you idiot. set up a wordpress quick Make a tumble. I've never, never, I've never been on the internet before, but I could. I, I know blogs are big. I could do one. I don't know, I'm just trying on to Tumblr? now picture the Sony board meeting where someone's like, "Have you heard of Tumblr?" 
<laughs> and you all know, these old men being like, what? Where did the guys from Quibi go? I heard I'm all those kids are on Musical.ly. Dan, uh, Ka- oh wait, Katzenberg. What's that's one of them? Jeffrey, Jeffrey Katzenberg, Jeffrey Katzenberg. And Meg Whitman, and they both said, "Well, we don't really watch TV, actually. <laughs> we don't know how yes. people." Wait, was this Jeffrey TV? Katzenberg of DreamWorks and Disney? Pixar, I thought. Yes. Or yeah, yeah. Uh, he works. should have known better. <laughs> Jeepers! Yeah, get Michael Eisner um, on it. Speaking of Christopher Judge. <laughs> What about a Stargate game in the vein of like a like a Left for Dead or Back for Blood? Ooh. I don't know. I was almost thinking a Stardate game, Stardate, Stargate game in the sense of like uh, Stardate would be really great, actually. But anyways, <laughs> um, what's that game we play? Due Process. Yeah. But, so not exactly Sorry. like that, but you're like planning the planet you're going to and what you have to mm. do. So, but so, okay, look, I look, I I, I want to get on board with this, but the problem is we already oh. played the best Don't. Stargate game, <laughs> the Roblox game. <laughs> not even kidding. <gasps> there was a very good multiplayer. Jake, did you see that now episode that we, of, of I'm going to have to go watch it now that you're talking about it. Now that you we have, have to go Jake, watch it, it's, we should play it. It's it's basically like like a small scale MMO of Stargate where you log in, you say who which side do you want to be on? And it's like civilians, you know, SGC or uh the 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 gold. And then like that determines where you spawn. And then you like you can dial in the gate to different locations and then you go through the gate. And it's like you're trying to capture territories. I like, like it. it's actually really well done. It's like a cool little multiplayer. We should role like play an episode game. Oh my god, this is a great I idea. Remember, remember that one episode when I started talking in chat and I was like, "Guys, I love Stargate," and we started talking about our yeah, favorite episodes. Yeah, but we should randos. role play an entire episode or have Jake write a brand new one and then yeah. do the whole thing. <laughs> Write a Stargate spec script. We it's it, look. <laughs> I'm gonna say it honestly. The way you turn this AAA is, you need you need you need Destiny, but it's Stargate, and there's actual factions that matter, plus a little bit of planet side where you're capturing territory. Man, we yeah, should just start a studio, yeah, and we'll make the game. Yeah, let's let's yeah let that's the next Subpixel Films is expanding <laughs> into Subpixel Interact. <laughs> <laughs> honestly right now stargate's in such a weird place like they had that web series that was like six episodes on some weird like online network like they're pretty much letting people do whatever they want with stargate and at least do a pilot and then they're like yeah okay maybe, well, maybe not. Like, they also stargate games coming out they also just did or not just did maybe a couple months ago with the cast they did like an ai written episode of stargate yeah. we should perform one of those just get an AI to write it and then perform the episode. Mm-hmm. <gasps> yeah, that's the thing is like Stargate's in this weird place where the IP has been passed between so many companies that I, I can't. I think I think it's Amazon that owns it now. Is it right? Because didn't Amazon didn't Amazon buy MGM? Oh wait, maybe you're right. Yeah, and so who? And so it gets getting passed around, and every time it gets passed around, it doesn't get shoved in the closet. They look at it and they go, "What can we do with this?" And they spend There's a little money, money to, to get like, here. like get spec scripts and ideas. And the problem is, honestly, I think the problem is none of the ideas are good, so they don't get made. So they're just waiting for a good idea. Oh, and there, there's there is a Stargate game coming out. I think they just hit like beta. So mm. guys, I think we need to do it. It's a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> Stargate's Anyways. very good. Anyways, God of War fucking coming out November 9th. Uh, not even the coolest game coming out in November. Uh, learn more about that later. Um, yeah, just just one more one more little tidbit on this. Yeah. What, I thought this was just a blog post about the launch date, and I was like, okay, I'm still going to throw a fit, but I guess that's okay. There's also a new trailer with new footage in it, also in this blog post. Like, yeah, but it's that- a CG trailer that doesn't look great. But still, like, like if you're if you're just doing a release date, I'm like, OK, that thing shifts. You don't have time to prep for it. Maybe you just throw that out as an announcement. But if you've got a trailer with it, put it in your. Why was your fucking E3 state of play? Huh? What are you doing? I don't know. Yeah. So, you know. It's Speaking weird, too, because it's I don't like don't understand why they made a cinematic CG trailer, because it's clearly not in the game. And it won't yeah. be in the game. So why did you spend all this time on this trailer that ended up in a blog post? 
Is this is this just like is it like a Blizzard trailer? I don't even yeah. look at it because I don't give a shit about yeah, this game. Blizzy. Like all the cutscenes in the game are rendered. Or oh, like not yeah, pre-rendered. It is. Yeah, because it looks weird too. Like like uh Kratos' proportions seem off. Oh my goodness, I just made the greatest thing I've ever seen. I can only send it to you guys though. Um yeah, it's just oh, I guess I can send it. Yeah, it's weird. It's so Speaking weird. of E3. This game looks identical to the last <laughs> one, though. I mean, I can't imagine they're probably not changing the engine, right? Probably not, but I still no, don't know. I don't think so. They're Play at least it. upgrading it. Um, anyways, that's coming out Godot. November 9th. Um, we don't have to go too much into this one, but Forspoken was delayed to January 24th of the year of our Lord 2023. Um, I heard people I saw that like... game and it wasn't great. I feel like this game, I, I this doesn't happen often. I feel like this is one of those games where when it was announced, people got really hyped for it because unlike God of War Ragnarok, it was actually announced with like a lot of pizzazz. It was in, was it, was it game of the game of the year or something? It was in some big presser. And, and then they were like, look at these names attached to it. We've got Gary Witter writing. They're like, doesn't this look cool? And expectations and excitement were up here. And it's just with every new piece of news and information. It just drops and drops and drops and drops and drops. So this is like this is on a solid landing approach to like a six out of ten. Force token. Exactly. Yeah. I forgot this was the one that had Gary Witta involved. Yeah, Gary Witta involved. It's uh, it's a uh, kid in King Arthur's court with a I believe it is a female person of color star and an all white writing room. So, yeah, but they yeah. know what they're talking about, Ian. <laughs> Do your research. There's a very you get okay. Look, I, I, this is this is a little bit of a tangent, but I feel like it's fully appropriate here. Do you, you guys watch Saved by the Bell when you grew up? No, no. Well, like, say, like around that era of television, you remember how there was a lot of like Marx Brothers jokes and like jokes about things from the 20s and 40s in this like teen show from the eighties. I don't know. And, uh, I watched Frasier. <laughs> Frasier. I was listening to a no, podcast. A I was listening to a podcast and they brought it up and they're like, it's like that because the writer's room was all these people who were like industry veterans, but they're like white guys in their forties and fifties. Yeah. They don't know how to write for. <laughs> yeah. So teens. they're, so they're writing to like their youthful humor and that's what the force poken feels like it's going to be <laughs> is they're trying to make some like some like edgy like like tail and it's really just a bunch of vanilla white guys and it's like i don't know i don't know the we don't need your story like why do you think you can tell that story well you know yeah it's like we need new voices not new characters i don't think i know? can tell any we story well. yeah um so I, expectations in the dirt for this thing who knows maybe it's fantastic that'd be awesome yeah, that's all I can think of. I just heard the game plays a little meh, and then if the if the story on that side doesn't make up for it, and it sounds like it might not, um, I don't I don't know how that's yeah. gonna do. Um, next up, I thought this was exciting. I just threw this on here, um, because it was cool. I I saw this this morning. Um, or actually, I, sorry, I didn't throw this on here. Someone else threw this on. I here. threw it, but I, I saw it. this this morning and I went to go throw it on. Um, three four three is reviving Halo 2's infamous Earth City E3 demo. They are giving assets to some modders who are trying to get it work in uh, Master Chief Collection. Um, they are also, uh, which this article doesn't put in the headline, and I think is even cooler. They are also working on the Halo 1999 Mac World demo, which I think is cooler than this but um is, does steve jobs still introduce it i hope so i hope they get a new steve jobs um the halo 2 demo i remember watching it over and over and over again oh, it, it looks it so looks cool good nowadays like it's just it's awesome and like a lot a lot of parts of it like the ideas from it came through in halo 2 but this level and the way it was done didn't and I'm glad to see it finally be made because it's 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 great. I'm watching it now. It's fantastic. Oh, I wish I could watch it. I wish. But alas, I belong to another woman. Um, yeah, it's it's just so good. I I can't. 
Um, speaking of E3 demos, they're coming back. They're coming back, boys. E3 2023 is we returning it. Like, to LA. We talked about it. In Los it's Angeles. Um, A bunch of people acting like E3 was dead. E3 was never dead. They're back. In LA, uh, Read Pop, the popular event production company behind PAX, New York Comic Con, and Star Wars Celebration, among others, is taking over the event production of E3. Um, I, I feel like I haven't had a bad experience with Read Pop. Um, well, at least not that I can been, think of. I've been to, been to PAX East twice. Oh, and PAX Unplugged. Do they do yeah. PAX yeah, Unplugged? Yeah, they do all PAX. And um, they're great. I mean, I, I think what I really enjoy about them is that I've been to conventions and shows, etc., where it's just like, hey, it's just booths or it's just gatherings or it's just the swap hall. But this is like, no, we, we know you're here for a whole bunch of different things panels meet and greets weird experiences a place to sit down and eat and have fun with your friends special vendors even different types of vendors you know if you go to like pax east like there's the tabletop area and then there's the actual gaming area and then there's like the hardware area so they know that they need to hit like multiple different segments and get key players involved key vendors and key presenters and they put on a great event so i'm excited for this it feels like e3 was always about the press conferences and getting hands-on with the games and unless you had an invite to the press conference or like standing in lines for hours it wasn't really worth it and i always wanted to go just to say i went but i wasn't expecting it to be that good yeah. but if they're really going to turn it into like a big gaming festival and it's going to be the biggest of the big so you're going to have even more guests and more huge events and crazier things than they already have at pax events which are already pretty awesome I'm in. This is gonna be fantastic. E3 Do you think they're gonna be able to get any of the big, the big presenters back? I honestly, I don't think they need to, because they just need, they just need them to be presenting around the same time. Yeah. Mm. Which, which most of them already do, because yeah. they just need to build into the E3 week hype. And that will get enough of the smaller players into the space and then just adding all sorts of crazy experiences on top of it to get people to come. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. They haven't announced uh, any dates yet, uh, but Jeff Keighley got out there to mention that Summer Games Fest is still also happening in person and digital next year. Um, so we'll see how they work it out or where they put I, um, stuff. I had a really weird finding this morning. I think it was this morning. Gamescom, the big European gaming show. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna be in Europe like 40 minutes away from Gamescom when it's happening this year. Wow. I don't plan on going. We're because we're doing like a World War II tour, and I don't want to drag my father to what is apparently an incredibly crowded and horrible smelling event by all people. <laughs> <laughs> all reports of it. Um, but it's just weird to be like, oh, I'm gonna be that close to it. That's crazy. Should pop on by, take a whiff. There will leave. likely be a number of uh, um, subpixel associates at Gamescom. True. Oh yeah, taking that's out true. their we targets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> we trained them in Iceland. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, it's very interesting. It's so great. Uh, moving on, Ian put this one here. I know he's excited that the Quest Two will no longer require Facebook login next month. Um. Yeah. So, if you're not aware, the Quest and Quest Two originally, you had to log into your Facebook account to use the headset. Swear fealty to Zuckerberg before they let you in. Yeah, and it was a very strange decision. Like, it's one of those decisions where you go, "Yeah, let's combine the ecosystems." Like, we want people to be using this not as just a nobody. We want to encourage like interaction as you, the you, the person in VR. But then it pretty quickly broke down because you're like, "Okay, well." Facebook accounts get banned for no reason. And for some reason, new Facebook accounts get banned very easily. So there were people creating a Facebook account for the first time, not posting anything. And then within 24 hours, their account was banned. So they're basically locked out of their, their device. Um, and then the other one was, was businesses, people who have multiple friends, like multi-user households. Not everybody has a Facebook account that they can log into. Or if you're a business, are you going to have to create fake Facebook accounts for each of the Quest 2 that you're handing out at events, etc.? Like it was, it's a very weird requirement. So basically they're rolling it back. You're still going to need an Oculus account, 
But the uh, the kind of underlying here is that the Oculus account is less likely to be banned. You don't have to tie your real name to it, et cetera, et cetera. So it's 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 been a long time coming. I'm glad they're rolling it back because, folks, it's hard to deny it. But the Quest 2 is by far the best VR headset on the market. The the features that you get for the as little as you have to pay for it, like it's the best. This is basically the worst thing about it was the Facebook requirement. So them getting rid of it. It's fantastic. It's a great call. Too late. I don't want to say too late. Very late, but very late. I'm glad they're finally doing it. I'm glad they did it too. Uh, fan favorite game, Skull and Bones, shown off 2018 E3, the pirate game you know you it's wanted. 2018? 2017, I believe. 2017? Uh, I'll double check. Hey, you guys remember Assassin's Creed Black Flag, right? Remember how fun that, that was? was? Even longer ago, 2013, well, 2014. Seven Assassin's Creed games later, do you still like sailing pirates? Uh, because yes, Skull and Bones like is idea here of it. for you to be a pirate. And guess what, Jake? They showed off gameplay today. They also announced it's coming on the eighth of November, one day before November. God of War Ragnarok. So get your pirating in before you head back to Norseland. Um, they shot off a gameplay video today, and I said this in the subpixel chat. I said this at work for double dipping on the joke. Uh, but they spent four years changing the font and changing the ampersand to the word and. Um, why like was that maybe this like help and like better seo with the word rather than the probably the weird yeah it's the only thing i can think of I, it's, like, it I, just looks better as skull and bones with the, the logo ampersand. before i thought was cooler um but anyways they shot off a lot of gameplay it was a lot of the same stuff because i watched the previous video before they announced the new one today because i was possibly gonna do like a comparison thing and it looks so similar like maybe a little bit uh, more fleshed out, but it, all the basic stuff was there. Um, boats. I don't remember. I didn't listen to the 2018 one. So this was set in the Indian Ocean. You're in South. That's the South Asia Sea, Indian Ocean area. South China um, Sea. It's, South China it's the sea. one next to India. Yeah. I think so it's South like China they specifically said Indian Ocean and all that, uh, that region. Um, so it's not set in the Caribbean. I like that. That's cool that they're kind of exploring that, even though it's apparently part of a marketing deal for the game to get paid for anyways. Uh, yeah. But it's still neat that they're kind of exploring that area that when a lot of pirate stuff focuses Is on. Is it like, of an era where everything. I could get a, a junk? I think that you can get a ship. junk. You get some opium. They um, showed a lot of different. They have cargo ships. Uh, look, I'm just, look, I'm going to jump ahead. Yeah, here. I haven't watched the, the new video. Game, game kind of looks good. It looks like it looks like they took Black Flag and Sea of Thieves and then just added a whole bunch of mechanical depth behind it and like variety. And I'm on board for that. Honestly, I'm excited to try this. It comes out the day before God of War. I'm picking this one clearly. Uh, look, I don't have super high expectations for this, but it looks like a good. Ship pirate game. I don't know. What, 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 what did you think, Will? I Like. I all of I think this game looks terrible and I don't want to play it. Um, You're a real piece of shit. You know that? Uh my problem is I would love <laughs> been to play it for years. <laughs> I would love to play a sailing game on a ship. Uh but none of the anything they sh showed was probably even remotely historically accurate. And it kind of bummed yeah. me out in a way. Or even like even like ship accurate. Like, yeah. I don't think you're really going to be trimming sails. I think you're just going to be driving a vehicle. That yeah. Is, and like the ship. amounts of like armor and weapons and like different stuff they were putting on ships just like irked me in a way because like I, I like like boats and ships and stuff so much that it kind of hurt that they were yeah. like really the, messing the with that. Is not, um, is because not I want to say not even Sea of Thieves messes with it that much. Uh, at least on the like they mess with like the the lore of pirates and stuff but they don't do super Crazy weird stuff. stuff but also sea of thieves is r rooted in like adjusting your sails and doing all that sort of stuff where in this yes, game yes, yes. you're more of the captain but, the whole time but like this this game rightfully so is drawing comparisons to sea of thieves and the problem that i have with sea of thieves that has been there since the game was in beta 
And they have just, it's, it's, it's like fucking destiny. Like they just refuse to admit or acknowledge the real problems with the game and just keep skirting around it, which is that Sea of Thieves, like it has no depth to it. Like there's like, do you remember in E3 when they announced you can now name your ship? And I almost like <laughs> threw a shoe at the screen. I was like, your game's been out this long and you've never been allowed to name your ship. Like, like there's just all these like Sea of Thieves is fun in very small segments, very far apart, because anytime you try and actually get into the game, you hit issues like, you know, the cannonballs running out and it's like, all right, well, this is really annoying or like just a lack of depth. And it's just like, oh, so I'm just doing treasure hunts and shooting ships over and over again. So Skull and Bones has me hopeful because they're like, look, I mean, they didn't say this, but it's basically what, what was shown in the trailer. Like, look, we're not as pretty as Sea of Thieves. We're just not. Our art style is not as cool. It doesn't look as cool. Our ship mechanics, not as cool as Sea of Thieves. Our water doesn't look as good, but we've got like 10 times the spirit. gameplay. We've got like 10, we got all these different types of ships, weapon types, all these different things you can do. We've got crafting, et cetera. We got it all out the wazoo. And I'm like, you know what? I'll take that over Sea of Thieves, honestly. My problem is like, is there going to be a good story? Is there going to be stuff to do? Probably not. And yes, they showed a lot to do. Can you, can you, does your player have as much freedom as your player in Sea of Thieves does? Because to me, it didn't seem like it. I, I think so. I, I mean, it was kind of weird. They showed you like mining stuff, but all from the boat. And then you're running around in the outposts. But at the same time, like, I, I don't know how well it showed, but like they showed a cargo ship. And I was just thinking, like, why would you need a cargo ship? Is there like actually like a market in this game? Like not necessarily a PVP market, but like a market where you're like, oh, if I go over here, I can mine really well and set up like a trading empire where I'm like making a run and making a shitload of money so then I can afford the cool ship. And like that right there got me going where I'm like, I can get into the grind of this game because I want the cool ship. I want I want to I want to buy an an extra cannon to put on my front mount so I can do like a mech warrior type thing, like like gear up the, the hard points on my ship like like the game started teasing all these possibilities that my mind was running. You literally just explained to Eve online. Um, so go play that yeah. Ian. <laughs> I've, I've tried to, I'm not super into it, but if this, if this is half as good as Eve online, hell yeah. But I don't think yeah. in this game, you'll be able to sail to an Island, jump off onto the Island and walk around it, go dig up treasure, go in a cave and stuff like that. Like, I think you can only get yeah. off at certain outposts. So I'm not going to say you're wrong, but I'm not going to say you're right because they, they was weird. They kept showing you doing certain things, but it wasn't clear if yeah. that was like predefined, like you 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 took your ship to a spot and now we're going to show you a cutscene of you as a person opening a chest or if it's because you found that chest. Yeah. So so th- and that I'm, is an I'm area of concern. That, but. I'm not saying that as a bad thing. Like there's plenty of games that don't let you do that sort of thing. I'm just saying in the comparison of Sea of Thieves, I think it's they're yeah. a little less directly comparison because I feel like I would pl- I, to me, I would play this game different than the way I would play Sea of Thieves. Like it would satisfy different uh, yeah. things. Um, the same there way I would play I have this game. game. There is a problem I have with this game though, which is that this game apparently costs money and <laughs> this game should be, the this should be an MMO. <laughs> this should either be like a full blown MMO or it should be like a destiny type MMO where they add a lot of customization for money, the core game is free, and you're kind of running around in these instances doing all these things to grind up your ship. I don't really see this as a 60 or $70 like single player game. You know, I want to run around and show off my ship and see some fat cat rolling in a really cool looking ship and be like, oh, if I grind for like 10 hours, I can get that cool ship. And look, he's got like they showed some of the multiplayer. Somebody had like a red, white and blue boat, like painted all America. And I was like, that's fucking cool. And so it's weird. Like they keep talking about multiplayer, but they're selling it like it's a single player game. Like I don't really understand what it is. And I don't think it's what I want it to be, which is like a multiplayer instanced, bigger scale, persistent game, you know? Yeah, I agree. Go um, ahead, Jake. You got a point. No, I, I don't have a point. I was just as we were talking about this memories of my childhood slammed back into my brain of a a constructible ship strategy game that my brother and I played that I think was just called Pirates but it was like it was like a WizKids brand and mm-hmm. it would have um you'd buy like 
booster packs of what looked like, you know, Magic the Gathering or Pokemon trading cards, but then in them would be cards where you could punch out pieces of a ship and build a ship. <gasps> um, and I'm, I need to track it down. That sounds so cool. It was super cool. Um, yeah. And I'm but sure some of them are still at my parents' house. That's, that's what I always wanted in Sea of Thieves. It was very simple, which is give me some form of progression. But mm. progression in Sea of Thieves has always been purely cosmetic. Like, oh, you, you do a gr enough grinding and now you can have like a naked mermaid as your masthead. And it's like, no, I don't want that. Like, give me something to grind towards and I'll be happy to grind towards it. And this game is like, look, let me show you like 12 different ship types and all these weapons and upgrades and stuff you could do. And I'm like, hell yeah, give me the grind. I want the pirate yeah. grind. See, yeah, Sea of Thieves would have been much better if it wasn't a battle pass style game and it was just like yeah. load people into your session play with your friends unlock as much as you can the unlocks don't matter because you can't use them against other people um and you can do everything yeah. you could do everything within like a week uh but they just live service games i did find some pictures of this game it's just called pirates and i put some pictures in the general chat on the discord um we should try to track it down and play it because I remember oh, it being super fun. Oh my god, that looks phenomenal. Okay, Jake, I mm -hmm. have played this game. Oh, really? And I have this also played, so I know exactly what that like plastic snap together stuff feels like. Oh uh, yeah, no. We it's also a, had planes. Specific texture. We had a plain version of this game. It's like credit what? card oh plastic. That's god. what it is. Yeah, it is like credit um, card plastic. There's also another version of this game that I want to say my dad sent me a picture of because the little models are like pretty accurate little ships uh yeah and they also well, have master like a bunch of extensions stuff. they had one for like the american revolution and they had one for like the caribbean and i think maybe they had like a pirates of the caribbean tie-in at some point <sighs> and I, at some so, point they introduced like sea monsters and stuff where you could so build it might be this monsters. game but they have like they sell now like actual ships rather than like the snap together stuff so mm. that's sorry uh, we're totally off track now that's kind of why i'm sure our audio listeners are loving this they're loving this looking at pictures on a discord they can't even access um it's wild um next up after our pirate talk folks uh this came out uh kind of later today um game stop the video yeah, game i'm retailer. sorry about this news will Shut Are you doing okay? Up. I hate you. Um, has um, had layoffs across the company, including GameStop proper and Game Informer. I know at least three Game Informer writers uh, were let go today, including one whose birthday is today. Um, I saw and woke up. I saw this in real time. Woke up, saw this man's this journalist tweet um, about how it's their birthday and this day's great and everything's gonna go great. And then three hours later, them quote tweeting it could not have predicted this um hey fuck gamestop um and also someone on the gamestop subreddit had the audacity to be like hey at least the nft team's unaffected uh to which i say oh fuck God. you <laughs> Oof. um i hope all of these people land on their feet um especially the journalists uh and get good jobs uh at better companies who treat their employees better when they have uh really good profits um yeah, just kind of sucks across the board. Uh, a lot of people were sharing stories of working for GameStop, uh, which were not great. Yeah, so this is why they announced the four to one stock split this morning, because it got the stock price up and then they could sneak in the layoff and the yep. chief financial officer leaving. Uh, kind of wild. Uh, and the final bit of news this week, folks. Subpixels Game of the Year 2021, the hit game by Daniel Mullins, Inscription is coming to the PS4 and PS5 with haptic feedback, uh, audio out of the controller, and lights out of the controller. Uh, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be awesome. If you haven't played Inscription and you've made it this far into the episode, DM me on Discord, me. on our community Discord, secret word, Lemon Sugar, and I'll buy a copy for you off of steam or wherever you want it actually i'll buy it anywhere um it's an incredible game it's very good um everyone should play it i it reminded me today i have the stl files for some of the stuff in that game and i thought about printing it um 
I wanted I wanted to do a wooden mask uh, from my brother, but he said it's hard to do like grooves and stuff. So, fuck you, Zach. Um, yeah, he's great not game. good enough. Yeah, yeah, he's not good enough. He's just not good enough. Um, I'm excited. Yeah, there's no date on it yet. Um, not sure exactly when that's coming out. And folks, that's the news for the week. Uh, which means we're freaking done with the show, guys. I'm gonna play the Ooh, music. Boy. Is this the short version or the long one? I would, I will eat your intestines out your ass. Um, this is the long one, folks. Uh, you can find all of our content subpixelfilms.com. Bring you straight to our link tree, which will link you to all the different things that we do. Uh, please, like a brand please. new episode of Mother Pixelate, fucker. Folks. Like a brand, brand new, episode new episode of Pixelate uh, from seven months ago when we went to Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. Kyle was there. We played board games. Uh, we had a great time. Um, so please go check that out. Ian did a great job editing it. I was genuinely impressed during it um and he's usually a shit editor I, i'm getting i'm honestly getting a lot i think having something to edit down like that is a lot easier for me than the scan lines where there's just nothing and you have to make something out of like yeah, continuous boring gameplay but i'm loving it yeah um jake thank you for being what here. Sorry, I'm just still, I'm totally down the I rabbit know. hole if this You're going down a rabbit hole. construction game. Uh, is, it, is it on Tabletop Simulator? Because I don't know. That's oh, a good we could play it on there. That'd be fun. Also, you, if you, you could just print it out and I can cut them out on my Cricut and we can remake the cards. Well, no, I'm sure I still have a bunch at my parents' house. Oh, yeah. Like a Let's bunch. Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, folks, there will be no Sunday service or weekend stream unless Kyle and Jake do it this weekend as I will be away with Ian away in Montreal. Also That's with right. some of my Missionary friends work. who happened to say they were going to be in Montreal. Uh, so we'll be there reporting live uh, through Pixelate and I might tweet some stuff of us touching each other's hearts and minds. The song has ended, which means it's time to go. <laughs> yeah, Please wave, you, over. you dumb hoes. Do you want to redo it? Fuck you. <laughs>